Most of you here today, I'm sure, are Americans, and you think of Jim Henson as American. Well, I'm here to tell you that Jim Henson was English. And okay, to the Poles, he was Polish, and to the Japanese, he was Japanese. He belonged to the whole world, but in particular, he was ours. He spent more than 10 years living in London. All the Muppet shows were made there, four movies, specials, the storyteller. And the creature shop that he loved is there too, in an old Victorian post office, 20 feet from the front door of his house in Hampstead. It was in London too, in 1981, that Jim sat us down, set us the task of creating a TV series that would end war in the world. Of course, we all fell on the floor. But then we picked ourselves up because he was quite serious. He was serious about change. The series was Fraggle Rock, and it hasn't stopped war. It hasn't changed the world. But it says something about the man that his intentions were so big and so simple. He didn't say, let's make a show that will win its time slot. Some of you might think that as much a curse as a blessing. But nevertheless, his creations were translated into dozens of languages, Finnish, Mandarin, Serbo-Croatian. Fraggle Rock was loved in India. He made a special in Moscow. I remember being in Baghdad to supervise dubbing Ernie into Arabic. The storyteller was seen by 400 million people in China. But it's not the statistics that are significant. It's, of course, the unique quality of a man whose work was truly above nation, above language, above creed. Jim had time for everyone, sometimes a frustrating amount of time. He was hard to travel with, jeopardizing a flight to sign an autograph, holding up shooting to listen to the ideas of a stagehand. He was available to anybody and anything, undemanding, yet asking for the world, offering space, but making it impossible to take a vacation. It could drive you crazy. Even when he was alive, he was as much a spirit as a person. And he had to be. His family, his company was all over the world. And he found a way of being with us all, always. His spirit informed companies, crews. Even Jim, when Jim wasn't physically there, there was this Henson thing, this signature. Hard to define, but very real in the corridors of our offices, on the sets of our shows. All my working life, I've been with the Muppets, 17 years. First at CTW here in New York, then for the past 11 years with Jim in London. My job interview all that time ago was a walk on Hampstead Heath, stopping on Parliament Hill high over London, one of Jim's special places, where he'd put a bench in memory of his friend Don Celine. The talk we had continued over dinner, then into a conversation which stretched over a decade. I know that when Jim sat on Don's bench, he looked out not over London, but over the whole world. When Jim died last week, he was mourned deeply in England as one of ours, and I'm sure in Poland and Japan as one of theirs. As Antony Minghella wrote in London on Wednesday, Jim will be missed by millions who might not know his name or his face, but would instantly recognize his voice and the wide green smile of his most memorable creation. Impossible to think him gone. Better to imagine him traveling as he did ceaselessly from country to country, from welcome to welcome. <laughs>